It, is this is this jig, jiggity jigsaw dot com? Oh, oh, good. Hey, listen. Uh, you know, I uh, I ordered a uh, a an, an, uh, jigsaw puzzle on eBay a couple weeks ago, and uh, the the number. I don't know. I don't know the number. I don't walk around carrying the number with me. I just, you know, com no. I I mean, yeah. I mean, it arrived fine and all. Just one tiny, tiny complaint. You didn't include the picture of the jigsaw, you morons. How am I going to put the thing together without the picture of the jigsaw? I've got 1,500 pieces of jigsaw puzzle out on my table. I have no idea what fits where or anything. Idiots. Well, I'm sure that we've all experienced frustration like that when we don't get what we need or the parts we need to actually do the job right. It's very frustrating. And you know... Believe it or not, it's probably a source of frustration for many of your students. What do I mean by that? I mean simply this, that often as teachers, we start instructing our students about, about how to do this, how to do that, how to hold your mouth, how to use your air, and so on and so forth, but we don't explain exactly what they should be achieving. Students that have no concept of the sound that is no picture like in the jigsaw puzzle, no picture of what the sound should be, are often in the dark. You're having to lead them step by step by step. So it's very incumbent on the teacher to teach the student what a good clarinet sound is from the very beginning. Students need that concept uh, embedded into their, into their heads and into their ears uh, very, very early on. And this is the picture that you're giving them. You know, as a teacher, you're always answering one of two questions for the student. You're answering what or how. Um, what is basically telling the student what needs to be done, what should be accomplished. You know, the clearer the, the student has the goal in mind, the more readily they're going to be able to accomplish it. Most of us as teachers are concentrating on the how almost all the time, and we're assuming the what, which is a very, very bad thing to do. I'll have to say one of my maxims as a teacher is to never assume anything. That's the only good assumption, is never assume anything. Always start from the beginning in the, of, of the subject. Always start at the beginning of the sentence, not in the middle. And most of us, when we're teaching, we start right in the middle of the sentence because we're assuming things that the students don't, are completely unaware of. So uh, it's incumbent on us to answer the what for the student, and the what is what the clarinet should sound like. So, how do we go about doing that? Perhaps from earlier videos, you'll recall that musical sound is made up of really four elements. Uh, the first element is what you call the quantitative, that is, how much, how loud it is or how soft it is. In order for musical sound to exist at all, it has to have some, some kind of quantity. But uh, intrinsically into the sound, there is pitch, color, and shape. And, uh, you know, uh, clarinet players, when they're talking about concept among one another, professional clarinet players, uh, they concentrate primarily on color, or they talk about sound as the color of the sound, and so forth. And uh, one of the things that, that was curious to me was uh, the realization that uh, clarinet players almost never agree on what the sound should be, uh, as far as the color goes. Some guy, one guy's dark is one guy's bright, and vice versa. In trying to teach tone concept, I eliminated a color right off because if it's confusing for professionals, it's definitely going to be confusing for students. Um, one of the more objective ways uh, to judge clarinet sound is tuning, and we're going to talk about that in a later video. Uh, it concentrates, of course, on uh, using the mouthpiece or the mouthpiece and barrel together in combination with the tuner so that the students can see when the pitch is right. Uh, but it has its faults, too. And in teaching clarinet tone concept, I think one of the things that we really need to concentrate on as teachers is another thing we ne we've neglected, and that is the mechanism of listening. how is always how you hold your mouth, how you do the air, how you finger this note. It's always tied up somehow in uh, some kind of uh, uh, intellectual understanding. 
Uh, and we often bypass the whole critical faculty of hearing, but music is what hearing is all about. So, uh, so I, I eliminated uh, tuning, uh, not, as, not completely uh, as a valid way of teaching tone concept, but uh, as a secondary way because I really want, wanted to teach students how to use their ears and how to listen. Well, by process of elimination, we get to the aspect of shape. And tonal shape seems in, uh, at least in, uh, initially, it seems kind of an odd way uh, to teach uh, a clarinet tone concept. But I found that it was really the most effective way and one that got the student to use their ears and one that uh, the students almost agreed on 100% on of the time. And I, I want to share uh, what I, how I did that uh, in the next section.